A.J. Brown was so good yesterday that the NFL drug tested him seconds after he stepped off the field. Nicholas Morrow, can we be honest here? He's putting Nicobe Dean on notice and might be taking over that linebacker starting role. And Eagles offensive line, unfortunately, got a little banged up yesterday. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. Well, happy Victory Monday here. The Eagles are 4-0. I know you're heading into your office. You're probably dreading a little bit of work today. But how about we channel a little bit of this Merle Reese energy to help us get through a dreaded Monday? And the kick is... Gone! And the Eagles win! Now, the Eagles, they're 4-0. And for back-to-back -back years, we went 4-0 in 2022 and now 4-0 in 2023. And they've done it a variety of ways, including the running game with DeAndre Swift. But yesterday was the passing game with A.J. Brown. And he was so darn good yesterday, the National Football League immediately took him into the bathroom along with Reed Blankenship and went ahead and did a, let's say it with me, a random drug test to make sure that he was not doing anything to enhance his performance. Now, it's crazy that a couple of games ago, A.J. Brown was upset with his lack of targets, his lack of production. He hadn't really done much for the first two weeks. And in the past two weeks, he has been the best receiver in the National Football League. Almost broke his career single game receiving record, but nine catches, 175 yards. The last two games, he's had 306 receiving yards. Absolutely incredible stuff from A.J. Brown. Let's think of these random drug tests. Do you think A.J. Brown was just randomly selected, or does the NFL find players that played really, really well that day just to go ahead and make sure? Now, A.J. Brown wasn't the only person balling out. He needed someone to throw him the football, and that was Jalen Hurts, who, again, had some up and downs throughout the day, up and downs throughout his season so far, but that second half was absolutely incredible. He was balling out of his mind. Deep balls were unbelievably accurate. On throws over 25 plus yards, four of eight, 152 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, a 135.4 passer rating. Thumbs up for Jalen Hurts. What's also good to see is that he might have showed the most emotion on the field he's ever shown in his NFL or college football career. And Lane Johnson, he took notice of that. Yeah, that, that last touchdown to AJ, uh, he, he got riled up a little bit. So it's always good to see him uh, show a little bit of emotion. So, uh, you know, he's a guy that prepares well, um, you know, has a standard of play that, that that he wants to match every week. So proud of how we responded, uh, proud of our offense, how we battled. It, it wasn't pretty. Uh, and like you said, it probably did take some years off our life. Is it safe to say that anyone who was doubting Jalen Hurts through the first three weeks of the season has kind of put that to rest? Are we all back on the Jalen Hurts hype train? I'm seeing where you guys are at in the comments section. Now, either way, 4-0 is all that matters. And Philadelphia now remains one of two undefeated teams with the 49ers beating the Cardinals yesterday and now facing the Dallas Cowboys next week on Sunday Night Football. None of that really matters though right now. All the Eagles care about is being undefeated and doing it any way possible. Nick Sturio he emphasized that to to the team in the locker room post game. All right, we've won we've won pretty much every way you can win in this league. But all that matters right now, we're four and up. Best part about being four and up. Not that we can go undefeated, but we can go 5-0. And one of the main reasons why Philadelphia did win yesterday defensively in what was an overall lackluster performance was the standout play of Nicholas Morrow, who, let's be honest, is starting to kind of make a case he should be the permanent starting linebacker on that linebacker depth chart. Look at these numbers yesterday. Absolutely incredible stuff. 11 tackles, 3 TFLs, 3 sacks, and 3 quarterback hits. That's more sacks than most Eagles have had all season long, and Nicholas Morrow commented on it. He said, quote, I, it's exciting. I'm happy. I think some of the defensive linemen are mad at me, so I might owe them one. But more than anything, I'm just happy to win. I've been a part of games like this where we did not pull it out, but today we did. That's the biggest thing, end quote. And again, I like Nicobe Dean. Nicobe Dean is very, very close to coming back from being put on IR with the injury he suffered in week one. With these numbers being done by Nicholas Morrow and honestly, Zach Cunningham playing good football as well, it's really, really hard to say they're just going to gift the number one linebacker spot back to Nicobe Dean just based on the fact he was that in training camp. Now, maybe you find a way to maybe take Zach Cunningham out the field a little bit, mix in Morrow. Maybe you play all three just at different times. I'm not sure. But where are you guys at on Nicholas Morrow? I think he's been fantastic. One of the bright stories of the entire Eagles team. And he can't just rip that away from him, even though Nicobe Dean is coming back. I guess it's a good thing that Sean Desai has three good linebackers instead of zero, like we thought they would have going into this year. It's his job now to not only fix what was a, again, lackluster secondary performance, but also make sure that all three linebackers get due play time and the best players play more than the others. Now, one player who's going to have as much playing time as he wants for the rest of his NFL career has been Jake Elliott. It's been so good throughout his Eagles career. He now actually has a list formed by Jimmy Kemsky of his clutch kick power rankings. Look at all these. 61 yarder to win versus the Giants in 2017. 
17, 46 yarder to go up eight in New England versus the Super Air in the Super Bowl, 48 yarder to win versus Oakland in frigid temperatures, 54 yards at overtime versus Washington in 2023, and the 61 yarder to close out the first half versus Minnesota in 2023 as well. This guy, all he does is not only make consistent mid range kicks, but hit the big, massive bomb kicks and the game winners as well. Thumbs up down below for what is an incredible, incredible day for made field goals, but incredible, incredible career so far for young Jake Elliott. Let's get this out of the way right now. Jake! God damn it! Now, what's even better than him making the game winner yesterday was the fact Devontae Smith, he told reporters he has a brand new nickname for Jake Elliott. Listen to this. You can build him. What you can't do? <laughs> Where did that come from? That's just what I call him. Chicken Little? Yeah. What do you call him? Why? Y'all ever seen Chicken Little? I don't know if I see the similarity of Chicken Little, the animated cartoon character, versus Jake Elliott. I like the fact that Devontae Smith gave him the nickname. Jake Elliott didn't really like it, as seen by this comment on his Instagram post. Hey, you can be called whatever you want as long as you keep making these kicks to keep Philadelphia undefeated. Now, the Eagles did not leave their win against the Commanders unscathed. They do have two injuries worth noting here on a Monday. One, Britton Covey suffered a concussion in the overtime period. I'm not exactly sure when, maybe during the punt return, but I didn't see it actually happen on the field. He's in concussion protocol worth noting because he has been a fantastic punt returner did really really well again on Sunday against the commanders will he be able to play on Sunday versus the Rams TBD subscribe for more but the big loss is going to be Cam Jurgens, who was seen leaving the Eagles locker room in a walking boot now reports are saying it's probably nothing major maybe an ankle sprain maybe a minor foot injury we need to wait till this afternoon to get the official MRI results but this is gonna be something to keep an eye on here because next week the interior defensive tackle you face is the greatest of all time and Aaron Donald Waisua Opeta filling in at right guard has done an admiral job. Honestly, he hasn't looked that bad. It would be a big blow to Philadelphia's offensive line overall if Cam Jurgens misses an extended period of time. Now, we'll find out plenty more on that again this afternoon. Probably talk about it on tomorrow's show. So make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe as we're really close to 20,000 subs here on the channel. We're not there yet, maybe by the next game, but I appreciate each and every one of you throughout the entire season. I think my favorite part from yesterday's win is the fact that Philadelphia got beat up a little bit, especially defensively, absorbed a lot of punches, but in the end, bended but didn't break. I mean, this is a football team that finds ways to win and as Nick Sirianni said a little bit earlier on in the show today, this is a team that's won a bunch of different ways. They've won close, kind of nasty defensive battles. They've gotten a lot of turnovers and beaten you from the secondary. They've struggled in the secondary. They've ran the ball well. They've not run the ball well. They passed it poorly. They passed it well today. They seem like they can kind of morph to whatever the defense is giving them. And that's going to give Philadelphia a lot more chances to win some of these tighter, closer games versus whenever they would, you know, not run the ball well and lose because of it. I'd give the overall grade for Philadelphia's win yesterday a B-. minus. The minus really comes from the fact that Philadelphia's secondary continues to struggle. Will they make a move to address that? Can Sidney Brown come back and help from injury? That remains to be seen. But offensively, how can you not say a team that scored 31 points against a pretty darn good commander's defense is not at least an A, right? I think overall, they get the A, the defense gets the C, you can buy them for a B-, minus. but as we said at the beginning, a win is a win, and that's good enough for me. We have plenty more stuff happening the next couple of days and weeks here on the channel. Make sure you guys subscribe. I'm Thomas Mott on Victory Monday. Enjoy it. This has been the Thomas Mott Show.